Hey guys, this is Doug again with fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. I want to talk to you a little bit right now about spirals. Um, this is a, sort of a short version of one of the books, one of the chapters in the big picture book, which is on the website. If you go to fellowshipofthemartyrs.com, down the left hand side, there is, uh, 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 there's books, free books, and one of them is the big picture book. Or if you go to free books, one of the links will be to the big picture book. It's a book that's not finished yet. It's kind of an ongoing work in process. I don't know if it'll ever get finished. It's just a place to dump little nuggets of stuff that I'm not sure what else to do with. Anyway, one of the chapters in there is about spirals. And if you get on there, you'll see some of the graphics and stuff that I'm trying to show you here. But I wanted to do it just a little bit with the chalkboard to, under, to, to explain to you. This has been really fundamental to what the Lord showed me and how to understand His Word. And um, some people talk about hermeneutics and stuff like this. I suppose that this is a hermeneutic method but this is what the Lord showed me and um, <clears throat> what has resulted in me having a lot more fear of the Lord, a lot more respect for His Word, a lot deeper understanding of what He's doing and, and, and how He can say one thing and it mean a whole bunch of things at the same time. So many people want to take the Word of God absolutely literally, and that's fine. The problem is... That's not the only application. There are poetic applications and allegorical applications and all kinds of other things that we need to understand as well. Anyway, so <clears throat> here's how this works, okay? Lots of people say, everybody agrees that history repeats itself, that we go through the same cycles over and over and over. That World War One and then World War Two and then whatever's coming and that, you know, we keep seeming to go through society after society the same things. The thing is, people think it's circular. And it's not. It's spiral. It's ever increasing. There's always more and more of us to screw it up than before. So yes, we do repeat the same things over and over again. But it's not a perfect, like going around one little ring, like going around a wedding ring over and over and over and over. It's not like that. There's always more of us to screw it up than last time. Anyway, so um, it's the same thing with the Word of God. The Word of God can have application, not just to Israel at the time, but to the church. To, uh, to a nation, to a whole bunch of systems, to my personal life, to my family, all kinds of things, okay? If you understand this, then when you read the Word of God, you can say, okay, Lord, what spiral are we talking about here? What is the application that you're trying to show me about this? Is this America? Is this Missouri? Is this liberty? Is this my life? Is this my spiritual life? Is this my natural life? Whatever, and you can begin to hear him narrow down on exactly what it is he's talking about here and what the application of that verse is to you. And hopefully it will really help you understand things better. Let me show you. Here's the spiral, okay? Just to give you an idea. Um, if you want to learn more about the spirals and how God uses the spirals, go, go to goldennumber.net. It talks about the phi, which is uh, just an amazing fingerprint of God's creation. It's just his thumbprint on everything. It's going to be really hard for atheists to explain how the phi, how that number, uh, 1.618, yada, yada, whatever that goes on and on. It's like pi except a, a different mathematical number. But that number is in everything. The, the, the Ark of the Covenant is built on the phi. Noah's Ark is built on the phi. The colors of the curtain in the tabernacle are based on the phi. Um, the human heartbeat is based on the phi. The respiration rate, um, DNA twists, all kinds of things over and over, all over the universe. Spiral galaxies, everything follows the phi. And nobody can figure out how that can be, except that's not God's thumbprint on creation um, and him kind of making a joke and confusing the atheists. Um, anyway, so take a look at goldennumber.net and just look at that, and it'll just boggle your mind mathematically of how really pretty and beautiful God is. Anyway, here's a, here's a, um, a spiral, um, and basically this is how this works. The whole Bible, lots and lots of parts of the Bible, prophetically, especially... Um, in Deuteronomy 28 for exa is an example, the curses and blessings of God. Uh, John 15 is another one. If you obey, then I'll lift you above nations. If you disobey, I'll curse your children. Uh, you know, John 15 says, if you abide in me, then I will abide in you. These are contracts, okay? This is, this is a recipe. This is God telling us, limiting himself, option, you know, by his voluntary limiting of himself to give us some predictability about who he is and how he operates. So he, he tells us, if you do certain things, then I will respond a certain way. Now he leaves himself open to do it. He may destroy your nation with locusts or with the Midianites or with the Assyrians or with the Romans, but he is going to destroy your nation if you disobey God. It's just a question of at what point he's ready to do that and how much you've disobeyed enough. The only variable is the quantity 
Okay, it's not it's not whether he will do it or not. It's it's when and how he will do it, and how many of you there are for him to do it too. So <clears throat> the if then statements are something that you need to look for all throughout the Bible. When God says, if you do this, then I will do this. Isaiah 58 is one of those. If you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, take in the poor wanderer, stop the malicious talk and the pointing finger, then I will turn and your light will rise in the darkness. And when you call, I will answer. Deuteronomy 28 says, if you obey, I'll bless you and lift you above the nations. If you disobey, you're going to eat your own children. And they did in the book of Lamentations. This is real. He does this stuff, okay? And even in the New Testament, and even in the modern church, God is still putting curses on people that insist on disobeying. His law does not change. These are constants, okay? Basically, it works like this. If you look at the book of Hosea, and you say, okay, Lord, did Hosea apply to Israel at the time of Hosea? Yeah, that's the original application, okay? That's the, the center point of the spiral. That's the application to them. Did it apply to Israel later on? Yeah, it applied to Israel at a later date when they're under the Romans. A lot of that same stuff they're doing again, and judgment lands on them even harsher than it does under Hosea. Well, does it apply to the Jews during the Holocaust? Are they disobeying? Are, does judgment land on them like it does under Hosea? And under, yeah, it's the same stuff again, okay? They're going through the same spirals. Um, and on the ninth of Av, on the ninth day of the month of Av in the Hebrew calendar, Solomon's temple's destroyed, Herod's temple's destroyed. Hitler signs the death warrant on the Jews in the Holocaust. Kicked out of England, kicked out of France, Torahs burned, synagogues burned. Over and over and over, God is reminding them that the ninth of Av, which is the day the spies came out of the Promised Land and said, there's giants, we can't go. When you chicken out and go your own way, you're all going to go into the desert and die. And he doesn't forget that kind of stuff. So over and over, God is using the ninth of Av to teach lessons, not just to Israel, but to the church as well. Okay, so does Hosea have application to America. Um, yeah, if you look at all that stuff, we're doing the exact same stuff that they were doing under Hosea that God was mad at them about, only we're doing it a lot more than the Jews were. There was six or seven million, maybe four million, however many Jews at the time of Hosea in Israel. We got 280 million Americans that are doing the same stuff. The body of Christ is doing the same stuff that the priests were doing then, and God is just as mad as he ever was because he doesn't change. The question is simply, how much is going to land on you for doing the same thing that they did then? Okay, does, it ha does Hosea apply to the world? Is the world doing the same kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay? Imagine this was a piano keyboard, okay? A lot of the problem that we have in the church is that everybody is insisting that their interpretation is the right one. And they don't understand that God could play every C on a piano keyboard at the same time. And you would say, I heard a C. And I would hear, I heard a C. And you would say, but it's this C. And I would say, oh no, I heard this C down here. I heard a bass C. No, I heard a middle C. Well, I heard a high C. Well, it can be all at the same time. Because God is really creative, really big, and he can say one thing and mean lots of different things. That's the variegated, multi-hued, you know, beautiful nature of the, of the word spoken by the Holy Spirit. Um... Anyway, so if you look at the Bible, if you look at the Old Testament, and you say, okay, Lord, what is the application of Hosea to my own heart, to my family, to my city, to my whatever? It's this, this formula right here. You can see. Behavior X. If you do behavior X, then consequence Y is going to result. Okay? So if you obey, then he'll, the consequence is that he'll lift you above nations. Okay? The outcome, the, the result, whatever you want to think of it. Okay? The only variable, then, is the quantity, okay? If you're one person and you obey, he'll lift you above nations relative to you being obedient. If you're a whole nation being disobedient, if there's a thousand of you, then consequence, okay, if you disobey, you're going to eat your children. How many? One, because there's one of you being disobedient. Potentially, give or take, God can do whatever he wants, okay? But if there's a whole nation of you being disobedient, then you're all going to eat your children, okay? Pharaoh wouldn't let, Moses said, let my people go or else. He said, no, I ain't gonna. Well, that's an if-then. If you let them go, then your children won't all die. He said, no, forget it. So, consequence, why landed on him times every firstborn in Egypt. Okay? If you look at the book of Lamentations, God is absolutely serious about this. If you do a negative behavior, then a negative consequence is going to result. And the only variable is how many, of there you are, how many of you there are doing it. Okay? If America, 280 million, does negative behavior then negative consequence Y is going to result times 280 million. 